Hello everybody. Today we're at HD Camera Rentals. They were nice enough to let us use their facility and some of their equipment to let me demonstrate and give you a complete walkthrough of the new C-Motion, C-Volution um, wireless lens control that uh, will also control your 3D rig. So let's get started. In case you were wondering, my name is Pedro Gamaris. I'm a 600 camera operator, steady cam operator, and a stereographer. And in case you didn't know, stereographer is the person who adjusts all the 3D settings on a 3D production. So we'll actually have a 3D rig here in the 3D portion of the walkthrough, and I'll walk you through the whole setup of the, of the unit. And uh, I think we should start with showing the differences between the new C-Volution and the previous version uh, of the C-Motion, which some of you might be already familiar with. So that's the old one, this is the new one. I figured we'd start talking about the main, really the heart of the new C-Volution unit, which is the uh, eight motor Cayman. So basically, this new receiver, or if you're a Preston, you know you work with Preston a lot, is basically the MDR. So this new receiver is called the Cayman. It's a, a eight motor Cayman, and basically if you see here, there's a double of everything. So two focus ports, two iris ports, two zoom ports, and then if you turn it over, you'll see a port that's got a C next to it, which is for convergence, which is a 3D con a rig control, and then also IA, which is uh, interaxial, which is the, or some people call IO. And um, so those are the two extra ports. And then you also have double of uh, RS ports and C bus and all the regular stuff you have on the, the old, the regular C motions. So, I mean, right off the bat, what's uh, pretty clear is that it's pretty small and compact, especially when you compare to the old units, which is, this is an, the previous Cayman. Um, it's uh, one of HD Rentals units here. And, um, but this only does focus iris zoom. And in, in a 3D application, you need two of them, you need two of them to do focus iris zoom in, uh, in a 3D application. And then you need a third one if you want to do IA and convergence. So the new one replaces three of the old ones. So obviously that, that's a lot lighter and um, a lot more compact. It's less cables. Um, it really makes uh, you know, cabling and, and just getting it organized in a 3D application uh, much, much better. It's also, uh, it looks like the same antenna, but the new, uh, the new unit has a lot uh, longer um, wireless range. So, so the other big um, improvement or change is the new uh, C-Volution handset. And if you take a look here at the previous model, you can see the previous model is uh, actually a little bit smaller. Um, it's uh, actually pretty ergonomic. That's what a lot of people used to like about it. Um, but uh, there's a few things that the new one really improves on. Uh, if you look here, the uh, new one has a little LCD screen for the zoom, whereas the other one didn't, and you didn't kind of you didn't know where you were at where you were at with the zoom. Um, so now that gives you an actual gives you an actual readout, and you can adjust the speed of the zoom right there. So that's that's pretty nice. So the other big thing from the previous unit is that the new C Volution has a uh, has a LCD, a little one and a half inch LCD here, with a rotating knob that lets you um, ma navigate through the menus and select things. So this is a very useful new function that uh, we'll get into more a little bit further when I start getting into the menus of, of the system. But uh, this makes a huge difference on set as for saving you time and um, and really, you know, giving you the flexibility of actually not even having to reroute cables and uh, a lot of other great things that uh, we'll get into right now. The uh, you'll notice that the actual that the actual knob is uh, is much bigger. Now, personally, I like it because you sort of you know drop your hand on it, and my hand fits nice and comfortable on it. It's a little bit you know it's a little bit bigger. The old one is a little smaller which is nothing wrong with that, it's just different. Um, just like the old one, it has a ratchet system. This is the, their 
optional advance knob. So you, you t this adjusts the tension of, of, the, of the pull. So you press down on the center button until it engages, and then you rotate. So it's almost like a ratchet. So the more you go forward, the more tension you have, and the more you go backwards, the less tension you have. The way it's adjustable. So the next new feature I want to talk about is the, the slider. They're now um, separate, so you can stack them up uh, up to four units high. You know, why would you want to do that? Maybe you want to put Iris, Convergence, and I.O. on the same handset, which is really nice. Or you can actually remove, remove them as needed. Here's a, re a removable uh, magnetic marker strip, so you can mark up your, your Iris scale. And um, so it's a great new feature. It works much better. So the new thing also is the two buttons, the run button on the top and the run button on the bottom, are assignable. So you can disable the bottom button, the bottom button if you want. That will uh, prevent you from hitting the button by mistake when you grab the handset and running the camera. So that's a that's a great new thing that you could turn those off or turn them on and assign them. So which leads us into the next new big difference between the two handsets. The old handset it works great if you're a uh, uh, right-handed uh, a first AC and you're pulling focus with the wheel with your right hand but when you flip it over if you're a lefty it gets really really awkward so what they did with the new one uh, it's uh, you know works great just as normal if you're uh, right-handed and if you're left-handed you can just flip it over and it essentially feels exactly the same uh, you can just reassign the buttons uh, like we talked about and uh, everything works as just as it would if you were uh, right-handed so that's that's great for uh, left left-handed operators, and it's a lot more ambidextrous than the old one was. Go any further uh, with the old system, you'll notice the the motor cables start with the CHM or CHM two, and now all the new cables um, are designated RHM, and they are different. And the old cables will not work with the uh, new Cayman. So make sure to keep them separate. And if something's not fitting, don't force it. Um, they're different. And um, the uh, C bus cable is actually different as well. This is the uh, previous C bus cable. Again, you'll notice it starts with an R. And the new C bus cable is uh, CCB. So the new stuff starts with the C, and the old stuff starts with an R. Um, another important note about uh, the new, ca new motor cables is that. Uh, New motor cable will directly work with a Preston motor. Uh, with the previous cables and the previous Cayman, you would have to uh, use a special um, C motion to Preston motor cable. So now that's not no no longer accurate. So um, you can you can just use a uh, the same cable that works for a, a Hayden motor will work for a Preston. So that's great in case you have a motor fail and you have a Preston motor close by, you're good to go. I figured we start with a basic uh, 2D setup, um, and you can imagine this is an SI2K that they have a lot of here at HD Rentals. But uh, basically, it's just a SI2K with a PL mount and an Ingenue Rouge uh, 16 to 42 lens. And uh, obviously, this could be on a steady cam; it could be anywhere you can imagine. But uh, we'll just use this setup since it's pretty simple and easy to see to demonstrate how we would work uh, the C motion system in a 2D environment. So. so there's basically two kind of motors that's in my kit at least. There's the uh, 26VE and the 21VE and if you put them side by side you notice that uh, one, the 21 is much smaller and uh, for Steadicam the 21s are awesome and I have two of them out of the eight motors that are in my kit. Um, so when I do 2D I'll put two of them you know, put the bigger motor for focus, and uh, that's what I usually do. So, just slide that guy on there. And in case things don't line up right, you can always push on the rod right here. The uh, actually gear pops out, and the kit also includes many different gear pitches. But so you just slide that guy on there, find the little slot. There you go until it's fully fully engaged and then there you have it. So in this case I actually need it on the other side. So this is great. Saves you a lot of time on set. You can just quickly 
swap things over and leave things exactly the way you want them to be. So I'll take another 21V and position that right. Slide that guy on there for zoom. And then I'll take the big 26 and I'll put that on focus. mounting the Cayman. Now naturally you can mount this wherever you want. You can, well like some Steadicam ops, put it right off their stage on the bottom. Um, you could also, basically we use this, uh, there's a V-Dock, which is like an Element Technica V-Dock, and it just slides in. And now I can put it on any rod anywhere I want. In this scenario, I'm going to mount it up here. And um, let me, uh, Figure out what I'm going to do here. Yeah, like that. And we just turn that guy. And there you go. So you'll notice it's in pairs. So there's focus and there's a motor number. See M1, and you'll see an M2 right there, and there's an M3, an M4, 5, 6, and so on. Um, basically, uh, when we're in 2D mode, you can go to, really, you can go anywhere you want is the truth because in the handset you can assign, you can cable things wrong and move it around which is wonderful. So I'm just going to put that in focus one and I'm going to put that in iris which is motor two. That's iris. And then zoom right here, I'm going to put that in number five position. And then I'm going to move this back. Oops. All right. Um, you good? All right. And you can tidy up if you want. which I like to do. And All right. Powering the Cayman. There's, uh, there's two ways to power the Cayman. Basically, you can use this uh, RS port to P-tap, or you can use the uh, four pin power. So. In this case, most of the time, you'll probably be using the, the P-TAP cable. And um, if I pull this off here so you guys can see it. Uh, it's important, there's two inputs for power when you're uh, operating in a 2D mode. Uh, well, basically, there's two inputs for power because this is actually two camins, two receivers. So when you're doing anything more than four motors, you're going to want to send power to both. So if you're doing 2D, you would think you'd plug it into RS1, but really, if to do 2D, you need to send it to RS2. So, plug that guy in there, slide it into the dock, and we're good. So, uh, before we go any further, I wanted to now bring in a, a new element into this, which is the uh, C display. And the C display is an optional uh, rental item when you rent a C motion. And basically what it, it allows you to do is there's a wireless video that goes that gives you a video image here from your camera and it's, it's standard def. Um, you could send it via a modulus uh, or another device like that or you can actually go uh, BNC uh, into so using this cable you plug that in there and you send a SD signal BNC out of your camera and then there's also an out so you can pass this through to a video village or whatever you need to do. Um, this will also allow you to do many other functions. So right now we're just going to mount it. So you use this bracket right here and you slide that puppy in. And this swivels so basically when you can attach this in a variety of different ways. I usually go like that 
you can mount it up here. You can also reorient the mount so that you go in um, portrait mode like that. Or you can go over here. So that affects a little bit of the balance of the unit. So whichever way you prefer. Um, today I'm going to go like this. So you take your C-Bus cable right here. Plug that in there. And there you have it. There's the antenna for the wireless video. And I believe, yep, that goes right in there. Uh, that plugs in there. There's the antenna for that. And in our case today, I'm just going to be sending it a uh, SD BNC signal. So, and uh, you'll see him blinking different colors. This just means it's not getting a signal from the transmitter yet. But you'll see all the motor lights are green. All right, so we're ready to power on the unit. You hit the on button and you notice it said searching and it finds it and you see iris focus, it's blinking yellow. Now it's blinking yellow because it says it needs to be calibrated. So when it's flashing yellow, it means it needs calibration. So we just turn the unit over. Now you're gonna press and hold the calibration. It says keep holding and now it says armed. And now that it says armed, you can let go and you'll see, you'll notice each motor calibrating, finding its end marks. All right, so once that's done, you'll notice that the yellow is now gone and that is all happy and you can now see the gauge moving up and down. Uh, you can adjust your speed right there, the speed of the zoom. There is a, a zap button, which basically means that even though you're at a really slow, slow speed, you can hold down the zap button and it's going to move it at its full speed so you can get to one end of the lens to the other really fast even though you have a slow um, zoom speed. Now that the motors are calibrated we can now mark our remote. Now notice some people like it to increase as it goes that way and regularly we go the other direction. So in this case, these marks are incorrect. Um, we're just going to go ahead and erase those. And um, so basically what we need to do is change the direction of the motor. It's going in the wrong direction. So if we now look at our display. So if you press the uh, select button in and then hit it, hit it again, you go into the uh, main menu section. So one of the ways is you can go into direction, click that, and M1 I know is focus. So I just click that and hit pressing enter, uh, pushing in on the button activates it. So it's now flipped the direction of the motor. So I can just hit exit and now As I move, it's going in the right direction. So you press that in and about gives you your firmware information. And sync is a function um, that we'll show later in the 3D that basically lets you scale lenses to each other which is a great 3D feature but uh, and then once back and then you see exit so we're gonna go back and then direction lets you change the direction of different active motors you see it it auto sense the three motor positions we plugged into so once again we can 
change the direction of that one motor if we wanted to. So we go back. Ramping is a ramping feature. Torque is a great, great new feature. So you click that in there. You go to the motor that you want to adjust torque on. And you enter that. And you can see here now you can select different strengths. So in my case, weak is actually enough to turn the lenses that we're using. So go back there. Now 3D mode is only used if you're using a specific uh, 3D rig called the screen plane rig. So in this case we're not using the screen plane rig so we want to ignore that. Um, motor, uh, once again you can see this is where you can assign a function to that specific so basically green and red is referring to this button down here and if you flip it over the uh, run button right there so basically if you select it you can reassign them so if you flip the controller over you can um, tell it to do something else so run is start stop and mark would be a uh, function you use in 3D and then the triple X is actually uh, uh, no function. So you can disable the button so you don't hit it by accident. So that's something I use a lot. Uh, and actually by default, I usually set it to no function just so that I don't, I don't accidentally um, enable things or do things I don't want to do. So continuing on, uh, there's a slider menu and that uh, you can tell you can tell what you want the slider to be. It could be at any one of many things. In this case, it's iris. You could change the direction right there. You can also, of course, change the direction in the direction menu, right there, left or right. So if we go back, so there's two places you can change the direction: direction menu, or either the slider or the knob button. So again, you got uh, scale and direction and yeah, go over there to the light real quick so the other thing is there's an illumination button so at Zliga Luis there's a so if you hit illumination and you turn that to on you get um, illumination on your ring which is great nighttime shooting you can see where you're exactly where your marks are on so, again, to turn that off, you just go in here, set that to off, and there you have it. So, once again, back is the button on the bottom. So, in the main menu, you can set your RF channel. So, you should make that the same as your uh, Cayman. So, another great feature is your wireless power. So. Uh, right now, I'm really close to I'm really close to the to the transmitter or to the receiver, so I have it at one eighth. But the farther away you get something, you're on a crane, you can boost that up half power all the way to max power. Now, if you have it on max power, uh, that might not be the best thing. Sometimes, if you have it on max power and you're within a foot or so of the camera, um, you'll have issues. So, if you know you're going to be working close to the camera, you can go ahead and turn the power down. Brightness is the backlight on the display. You can see it go up and go down. And we'll set that right there. And you can actually run a simulation so you can learn how to use this without a uh, lens uh, hooked up to it. Um, this is if you want to revert back to factory settings. So in this case, I don't want to, so I'm going to hit no. Um, and that's basically the main menu and that pretty much covers everything we need to know um, we'll get into the sync menu when we start doing 3D um, and you can check that out so you control pretty much everything from this one menu system which is a great new feature So if we're looking to set limits on the focus because we want to do, say we're doing a pull from two feet to three feet, 
um, but we're shooting on a DSLR lens and you know normally the movement is really small so 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 you start at your two foot mark and then you hold down the lens knob for what you're trying to set a limit for so in this case it's uh, the lens button for the knob or if you're trying to set a limit for the uh, it, you hold down the lens button for this or if you're doing the zoom limit you hold down the lens button for the zoom so in this case we're doing it for the knob so you start at 2 and you hold down the lens button and you'll see focus start flashing so while holding that down we're gonna pull the, our focus to our end point that we want to limit to so once that's at 3 I now release my, my finger and now you'll notice it turned black and it, it shows us where we're limited so now two foot to three foot you have a much longer these marks are now irrelevant because it now from two to three I'm actually pulling a lot of knobs so let's show that from this perspective so you might be able to see so now two to three equals a lot of turns on the knob uh, rather if you look at the uh, lens and you have your remote right there so we start at two now a two to three foot pull you actually blow right past the three inch mark and you keep going until you're at three feet so you have a lot more knob movement to lens movement so this is good on like ENG Canon lenses and stuff like that it's a really godsend so once once you set that um, all you gotta do is hit the lens button and it, it clears it and resets it so that so that now two to three is back where it should be. Say we want to set a limit on the travel of the zoom, so all we gotta do is hold down the lens button and it's gonna flash and then we zoom to the other portion and then let go of our finger and you see now it's showing you where the travel is so and it's going to limit it to that amount and then if you want to clear it then all you got to do is press the lens button and it reverts back to normal so if you turn your speed way down obviously it's going to go obviously it's going to go really slow so if you hit the zap button you can go really fast and then you let go of the zap button and it moves really slow again so at this point we've gone over a lot of the 2D functions reversing the motors, navigating through the menus, adjusting the knob and setting limits to lenses so what I'd like to talk about now is uh, two features that work really well together, which is the C-Display and um, the C-Finder. Now, the C-Finder is basically like a Cinetape that a lot of you might already know, but uh, it works very differently. It's sort of a different tool. The Cinetape works on a Sonic or a, sort of an audio bounce back. Um, this is an actual laser and it sends receives sort of like a radar gun uh, or a laser gun that uh, the cops use um, therefore it has a much longer range and um, it works in conjunction with the C display gives you a distance readout sort of like a, what a sound tape does there's a function within the C display that 
also lets you do autofocus. Um, now obviously this is not something you want to do very often, but uh, on some shots it's extremely useful. Uh, recently um, there was a, a shoot at the Salt Flats uh, with a, a thousand millimeter lens and a car coming at the camera and the autofocus worked extremely well for that scenario. So important thing to note about the C Finder and the C Display is that the C Display is completely compatible with Cinetape. So you could use your regular Cinetape that you've been using for a long time and it will display uh, range information on here and do everything it, it can do with the C Finder. So um, the C Finder is very uh, directional. It basically shoots an invisible la laser beam at your subject, uh, whereas the Cinetape is a little bit more a wider spectrum. Um, and obviously has a much longer range. So um, I'll probably start by setting this guy up and it's pretty simple setup. There's a few different attachment points. So you can mount this like this, like this, uh, anywhere you want. And basically, you can set it wherever you want, and then you set an offset from the screen, the measuring plane here, and the actual screen plane of the camera. So it can be anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be at the screen plane. It can be in front. It's exactly like a cine tape. So you'll see here on the C Finder, there's actual a uh, sighting device, sort of like on a telescope on a on a rifle. So you can actually pinpoint exactly where you want. There's a uh, actual laser, sort of like a a Hilti laser that comes out of it so you can actually just paint people with it but if it's something that's like at a thousand feet you'll use the, the gun sight. Um, there's a, a measuring plane mark right here and um, you can pretty much mount it wherever you want so you can mount it right side up or you can mount it flat and in my case I'm going to mount it flat so and as far as cabling, you just use the uh, C-Bus cable that comes in your kit. And the orange side will go to the uh, orange connector right there. So it's color-coded and there's no way you can mess that up. And this goes in here. And you'll see lights turn on right there. So basically you set up the C display, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you just hook up the uh, CBUS cable and slide it in its mount. You can orient this any way you want. So you can have it like this, you can have it over here, and then later in the menus you flip the image around so that it reads correctly. And that just slides in right there. So. So the video signal you can run in a wired configuration, just B and C. It's all SD only at the moment. So you can just plug that in right there. And there you have, you see, our focus target. And then it also works on wireless. So you can use something like a Modulus or any the standard def uh, uh, Transvideo Titan, any standard def uh, wireless video transmitting device. So and then you don't need the uh, cable. But uh, for today's purposes, we're going to use, we're going to be cabled in. All right. All right, so once you have it plugged into the CBUS, and then you slide it on, just hit the on button. And it's going to boot up. And so you can notice it's a touch screen. And basically just to take you through some of the functions, that's the video, video in, video out, the wireless uh, antenna right there, and uh, audio jacks actually, so you can get listen to dialogue if you want to do that.
maybe using that as a cue. These are actual shuttle, con shuttle controls because this has internal memory and it will actually record the, uh, all, this, all the information on the screen along with the, uh, the video stream that's coming in. So basically, um, there's three, three ways you can display information uh, and it's whatever it suits you. But uh, basically, this is the one mode where it gives you the scales for each of the functions. So focus, iris, zoom right there. And gives you your focus distance, uh, the distance to the target, and then your iris and your zoom setting. So if you go in right here and you go to the focus display mode, this actually gives you, in a much bigger representation, your uh, visual mode of what's on your lens. So right there. So it gives you your, your display right there. And then this is actually your depth of field. So um, near and far, hyperfocal, all that good stuff. And you still have the information right there. The uh, third mode is the uh, video mode or the, what they call the monitor mode. And basically, using the antenna, I can plug that right in there and get it wirelessly. Or using a cable, I can just plug that in. And you can see right there, now we have video straight from, I'm um, moving the iris, straight from the red camera. We actually have, so we get the video with the overlay of our focus information. So that's saying that the chart is at 4.7 and we're not focused. So see here, so if we go to 4.7. And so it gives you frames per second if you're controlling the camera, iris, your zoom, we're at a 24 mil, and um, your focus scale. And then this green portion is actually your depth of field, so, and battery information. And the interesting thing is, if I hit record, you see the red light come on, and it's actually recording this information as we're rolling, so I can stop that and saying it's saving the video and if we want to play back it's right now showing me right there that it's it's playing back what a, we just recorded so if I hit stop we're back live so this is a really cool mode I mean it's standard def at the moment but um, it's still enough to where you can judge focus and uh, more importantly look for cues. It gives you your you know, uh, depth of field. So it's an extremely useful tool that uh, once you use it, it's something you start getting really used to. And again, if you connect to audio, you can actually even get the audio and listen to for dialogue cues if you need to pull on dialogue or something like that. Here and these settings here you see your focal point and your near and far hyperfocal and you'll see that depth of field change as I change the iris and then you'll also see a change when you change focal length or where your fo what the distance you're focusing at. Once again you can go into the other one and it gives you a similar sort of menu All right. So when you're in one of these viewing modes, uh, if you hit info, it'll actually tell you what those buttons do. Um, so this actually lets you set markers, um, sort of like marking up your ring. So let's say at 3.6 I want a marker. I hit that. You see it added, it added it and it put the number one right on there. And you move to the next point and you hit marker again and it adds number two and number three and so on and so forth. Um, 
Read transponder is again the RFID. So if I hit that, it wants to read it, and then we would have waved, waved it by it. So if you want to clear the markers, you go into menu. See, let's info menu, remove all markers. Boom. So all the markers are gone. So there we go. So continuing to explore the menus, uh, if we go to CamCon, which is camera control, let's go into that mode. This, uh, depending on what camera you're using, you can actually control a few uh, items, uh, maybe frames per second, shutter speed. Um, the Weiss cam, you actually have full control of the camera with the Weiss cam. Uh, 435, I know this works with, and uh, you can get more information on what cameras it works with on their website. But uh, moving on, ramp, if we want to do ramping functions. And so one of the things you see here is focus assist. So if we hit that, it brings us into the focus assistant. And basically, this is autofocus. So you can leave that on, um, you can leave it off, or you can leave it so that when I press the marker button, which is that button right there, or I can also assign it to that button, um, it'll enable the autofocus, or you can make it so that to toggle it on and off. So I'm going to leave it on pressed because I only want to use it in a specific time. So. Um, hit enter, or, or tap enter. Okay, so you'll notice when um, auto f the autofocus is on, the LEDs in the handset will go uh, red. So this is to clearly let you know that uh, you're in autofocus mode. So watch the motor. You can see it really following the target very well. We'll go in here into the C Discal menu. And this is our, our, our lens setup menu here. Um, and the first thing we want to do is connect the C-Bus cable directly to the Cayman and not to the hand unit. Uh, this is very important. Uh, you won't get very far if you, do do, if you do that. So the C display directly to the Cayman. So here we go. So we go into create new lens and we'll look here and we don't have the lens we want. So we're going to click on, on template and then hit next. Our lens is an ingenue, and so we want to type in that it, it is a rouge. Shit. Rouge. And then you input the lens serial number, which in this case is 202. A, it's a zoom lens, so we turn in zoom lens, and it's a 16 to 42. And then we hit next. And notice it says motor control ready. If you see anything else, it's probably because you skipped step one, which is connect this directly to the Cayman. So um, you can go ahead and calibrate the motor. Um, mine, these are already calibrated, so it's not necessary. Um, click on get zoom control and then go next. So you see this little slider here. 
uh, first thing we want to do is, is set all our marks for the zoom. So we go into add and we'll add 16. We'll do save and yeah. so it's important to talk about this too. So we can add just a line or we can add a line and a value which would be a number. So the readout, the number 16. So um, this is uh, useful for when you want to set 16 and 18 with a readout, but put just a line for 17. So in this case, we want to do line and value. So we're going to do save a new. We're going to do one for 17. Oh, 17. Enter, save a new. And we'll do one for, oops, 18. Enter and so on and so forth. So we'll just do save value. So you can see here, VL stands for value and line. And the question mark means uh, it, it doesn't, the motor doesn't know where that number is at. So that's what we want to do next. So select 16. Notice there's a red line around this box. When I click on this, the red line moves to that, which means that's active. So instead of using the slider, I use the rotating knob here and you'll notice the uh, lens move and you'll see it moving and we'll set it to 16 once you find your motor position you hit set and it automatically jumps to 17 so we'll rotate this until it's on 17, we'll hit set, it jumps to the next one. Oh shit, look. Rotate that until it's on 18, and hit set again. So now we got our three points. You can hit next. Uh, this just lets you test it out. So it's actually moving the motor to where we set it. And then go next. And now it's gonna do the same thing with iris. So we have a variable iris. It wants to know the widest the lens will go. So in this case, the lens is a 2.8. So we'll put that value in there and go next. If you see anything else, um, you, it should say motor control ready. Um, if you see anything else, it's probably because, you, like, once again, you're not plugged into the Cayman. So you can calibrate the motor. This motor is calibrated already. So you go to uh, get IS control, hit next. And then let's add our scales. So you'll see here. 2.8, and in this case, I want a line and value. So, save a new, and then um, I'll do 2.8 and a half stop, save a new, and then I'll do four, save a new, and then I want to do five, six, save. So you'll see the halves and everything. And notice um, that's still saying VL and I want that, I don't want a readout for a half so I just want to make that a line so it can go in there hit edit and make that line only. Okay so I'll do save. So you see now it says L. So we'll go back to the first one and just like when we did with the with the um, zoom we're gonna do for the iris so highlight that box and then rotate with your finger. Um, 2.8 and hit set. It jumps to the next one. Um, 2.8 and a half. And hit set. Yeah. Grab that one. Go to four, set, and then we go five, six, set. So, okay, we're all set, so we're going to go next. And once again, it lets you preview and hit next. So, okay, um, so we'll go ahead and hit next. And f same thing on the focus scale. So, we're going to add, um, let's add two feet. Um, 
So our first mark will be for two feet, save a new. Our second mark would be for two feet, two inches, save a new. And next mark we'll make for three feet, so on and so forth. Um, and actually, we should have been doing line and value, so. Um, well, I want a two foot mark, so line and value. There you go. So, once again, enable that. Rotate the slider until the motor is in the proper position. Hit set, it jumps to the next one. Hit set. Set. And you just click next and it gives you a preview so there you see that line I made at two foot two and then there's two right there and then so you hit next gives you all shows you everything um, your summary of all your uh, your the lens you just created and you go ahead and hit save and so now you've you have a, a saved lens so you can uh, choose to, obviously we skipped through a lot of the marks, so if uh, I now want to go in there and edit those marks, you go into Edit Lens, you drop down, you select the lens you want to edit, in this case it's the Rouge that I just created, and hit Next, and it just confirms information, that's all correct, that's all correct. So here it, I now can start adding more focus scales or zoom scales. So 19, save a new, and I'll do 20, save, and there you have it. So, um, so how do you now load a lens? Uh, basically, you go into one of these. And then you hit menu and you see load lens right there. So we're gonna click that, select the rouge, and hit enter. So as you can see, it now sh shows us those scales that we just created um, right there. Five, six, four, the two foot mark, the 16, 18. Now, if I had created more, you'd see the rest of them. So um, there, you, there you can see how you can create lenses during prep and then uh, load them up when you change a lens and everything's pre-marked and you, know, you don't necessarily have to mark your rings at all. So, so there's all our uh, lens settings. Yeah, you, know, you could set your circle of confusion. Uh, you can invert things. You could change a, a number if you can go from feet to meters. You know, a lot of parameters. Um, but um, let me go ahead and show you how to use the uh, C-Tag. And um, you do that by clicking there, going back into the C-Discount menu, and clicking on right, right lens to C-Tag. You go ahead and select what lens you want to make the tag for and hit Next. And then do right C-Tag. So it's going to say it's going to overwrite the data on the C-Tag. It's basically a memory card. And do we really want to do this? I want to hit yes. All right, so um, let's get into some of the menus of the actual C-Display. So to do that, we would actually hit menu and go to the C-Display menu. And um, You can see here some settings. So there's radio frequency. Uh, if you're doing using a modulus, or you know, so you can set the channel. Um, you go in here. There's actual screen brightness. So this is a good way to save battery. You can lock the screen. This is where I was talking about earlier. When you mount the C display to the hand unit, you can actually change the orientation of how it reads out. So you do that right here. You go and it shows you how much free space you have in the internal memory that you can use to uh, record um, wireless video. 
Um, Right here it tells you, you know, what lens is currently loaded into the system, and it's that lens we created a little earlier. And there we go. It tells you the versions. So there's lots of things we can do in there. But 